Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. While Grandmaster Yoda was the heart and soul of the Jedi, the badass individual known as Mace Windu was very much the guardian and gatekeeper of the Order. And so when a young Anakin Skywalker was brought before the Council for assessment, Mace Windu rejected him because they saw him as potentially unfit for the Jedi. It would be the start of a very rocky relationship between these two individuals for the next 13 years, a relationship which would finally end in the Chancellor's office. Why was it that Mace Windu never trusted Anakin? How could he have foreseen this darkness in the young slave from Tatooine? And did he harbor hatred for the young Jedi, or was it simply just mistrust? Mace Windu was born on perhaps one of the most dangerous worlds in the galaxy, Harun Kal. The planet was located in the mid-rim of the galaxy and covered mostly in seas of toxic gases. Now, for some reason, all of the natives on this world known as the Karani, or the Uplanders, were Force-sensitive. Legends say a Jedi warship crash-landed on the planet during the Great Sith War, and the Karani were the descendants of these shipwrecked Jedi. The jungles of Harun Kal were extremely dangerous, so dangerous that only really a Force-sensitive individual could survive in them. For one, the planet had various metal and silica-eating fungi, which destroyed most technological devices, including even lightsabers and blasters. There are also all sorts of parasitic insects and very dangerous and sometimes even force-sensitive predators. And so the Karani evolved out of necessity, not only to be force-sensitive, but also to be extremely physically and mentally tough. In 72 BBY, Jedi anthropologists studying the Karani and their connection to the force asked to take one of their children back with them and train them in the Jedi Order. Mace Windu, who was only six months old at the time, had lost both of his parents and was selected. Now, Mace Windu was an extremely powerful and loyal Jedi learner. He was extremely disciplined from an early age and was devoted to the Jedi Code and the teachings of the Jedi Council. Some might even say that he was a bit fanatical. He actually struggled early on with his temper and frustration, especially when he encountered an imposter prophet who started a cult in the name of the Jedi. Young Mace hated con artists, heretics, and most importantly, Jedi who did not fall in line with the rest of the Order. Now, through the years, Mace Windu would learn how to temper these emotions within himself because he was, after all, a very devoted Jedi, but this underlying personality trait would shape his relationships with other Jedi in the Order. Mace Windu also developed a very unusual ability to see shatter points in the Force. This ability allowed him to see how things were linked together, whether it was individual planets or something smaller, like the various points on an enemy combatant's body. These shatter points could be targeted by a Jedi who had the ability to sense them, and this could create a cascading domino effect of events. A Jedi with the ability to sense shatter points was extremely deadly in duels and knew exactly where to strike to disable an individual. At the same time, a shatter point could literally be an individual of great importance, like say, for instance, Anakin Skywalker, who had a great amount of influence on the future of the galaxy and was connected with the destinies of multiple individuals. This sense was not an exact science, but it would enhance Mace Windu's ability to read things around him, including individuals like Anakin Skywalker. The Jedi Order, despite the best intentions of the Jedi Council, was still made up of independent-minded individuals who very much had differing opinions and personalities. It was very natural for informal factions and friendships to arise within the Order and even amongst the Jedi Masters who made up the Jedi Council. Mace Windu was propelled quickly to the rank of Jedi Master and gained a seat on the Jedi Council at the surprisingly young age of just 28. This was not only because he was a very powerful Jedi, it was also because he was seen as a wise individual who had a lot of discipline and who more importantly followed everything the Jedi Council said and he definitely really respected the Jedi Code. Qui-Gon Jinn was another extremely talented Jedi. He was eight years older than Mace Windu and couldn't be more different from the Jedi from Harun Kohl. Qui-Gon was a complete maverick and he was extremely independently minded. He was naturally curious about the Force and its many mysteries and perhaps seen as a heretic by the more dogmatic and rigid members of the Council. Qui-Gon Jinn would pursue the idea of becoming one with the Force and maintaining one's consciousness even after death, something that Mace Windu and the more rigid members of the Council would have seen as far too radical. And so when Qui-Gon Jinn appears in front of the Jedi Council and tells them he has found a boy who he believes is the Chosen One, 
Mace Windu is immediately skeptical. But he is also respectful and a diplomatic individual and agrees, along with the rest of the council, to see the boy. You see, Mace Windu had heard about this Jedi prophecy about the Chosen One, and he, like many other members of the Jedi Council, believed that Jedi prophecies were misleading and oftentimes very dangerous and could lead individuals to the dark side. The reality was many of these visions oftentimes affected the individuals who read these prophecies and created fear in them, which sometimes led to self-fulfilled prophecies. Now, Mace was also a Jedi historian, so he would have heard of the Jedi Padawan Massacre in 3964 BBY. A faction of the Jedi Masters known as the Jedi Covenant, located on Taurus, had a shared force vision that one of their Padawans would end the Order and cause great destruction to the Republic, and so they collectively decided to kill all of their Padawan. This action eventually led to the Jedi Order pulling out the Jedi Covenant from Taurus, which emboldened Mandalore the Ultimate to attack the world, escalating what had just been sporadic Mandalorian raids on sparsely populated Adarim worlds into a full invasion of a very important and a very populated Republic world. This, of course, would lead to the Mandalorian Wars, which would lead to the fall of Revan, which would lead to the Jedi Purge, and the near destruction of the Old Republic. So yeah, Mace Windu and even Yoda were very wary of trying to interpret prophecies because they were extremely tricky to understand and oftentimes led to tragedy. And so when Anakin was brought before the Jedi Council, Mace Windu was unimpressed. Despite the young boy's innate force abilities and extremely high midichlorian count, Mace Windu sensed a great deal of angst, anger, and fear in the boy along with attachment to his mother. Instead of seeing a kindred spirit who had troubled emotions, Mace Windu saw a liability. Also because he was a traditionalist, he considered Anakin far too old to become a Jedi. The Jedi usually liked working with infants who were blank slates that could easily be molded by the Jedi Order's propaganda. Before Qui-Gon Jinn died, he made his own Padawan, Obi-Wan Kenobi, promise to train young Anakin. It was ultimately an order that not even the Jedi Council could deny. While Mace Windu was still skeptical about the whole Chosen One thing, he was beginning to develop respect for Anakin's lightsaber skills and force abilities. During one of Anakin's training sessions, Mace Windu, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Palpatine were observing from above. Anakin overheard some of his fellow Jedi learners make a slave joke at his expense and quickly reacted in anger. Although Anakin stopped himself in time, the three older men witnessed the event. This would reinforce Mace Windu's belief that Anakin was a problematic, out-of-control Jedi. Palpatine, however, was intrigued by the young boy's combat abilities and asked to mentor the young boy. Mace Windu politely declined, but Palpatine countered that the Jedi were in fact under the jurisdiction of the Senate, who reported to him. And so Mace Windu outmaneuvered agrees to allow Skywalker to go speak with the Chancellor. Palpatine had always shown interest in the young boy, even before Skywalker had become a Jedi. Now, Mace Windu also had a very special relationship with Palpatine. Aside from being an excellent duelist, a Jedi historian, and philosopher, he was also quite diplomatic. Although Mace disliked politics, he understood the necessity of nonviolent solutions to problems. The Council noted his aptitude for diplomacy and ultimately assigned him to be the official liaison between the Jedi Order and the Chancellor's office. Now, Mace Windu, who was a traditionalist, was unsure of the Jedi Order's role in the war and was not so comfortable with the Jedi becoming essentially soldiers for the Republic. He also was suspicious of politicians like Palpatine, and although he was considered a close advisor to the Chancellor, he never fully trusted him. Both individuals were hiding their true emotions when talking to one another. Now, Mace Windu's role as liaison to the Chancellor also put him in the ironic position of basically being his protector in a lot of instances, and so Mace Windu was constantly in Palpatine's presence. Mace would become increasingly suspicious of the Chancellor in the latter years of the war as he acquired more power in the Senate and nationalized the banking clans and established a Federal Reserve. Windu also strongly disagreed with Palpatine's decision to bring the highly dangerous Zillow base to Coruscant. It was far too populated of a world to contain such a threat. Now, during the last year of the war, when it became apparent that Palpatine was not going to step down from his position after the war, Mace Windu and the Jedi Council began plotting on how they could remove the Chancellor from his position. Windu was also beginning to sense the dark side influencing and surrounding the Chancellor. He also feared that the Jedi Order was in danger. Palpatine by this time had grown very close to Anakin, and he was meeting with him on the regular. When Palpatine assigned Anakin as his official representative on the Jedi Council, it crossed the line for the traditionally minded Mace Windu. When Anakin protested that he should be promoted to Jedi Master now that he sat on the Council, Mace Windu became increasingly suspicious of the young Jedi Knights. 
And at this point, Mace Windu was really unsure of where Anakin Skywalker's loyalties lie, but at the same time, the Jedi Council actually wanted Anakin to spy on Palpatine for them. Windu would go on to inform Obi-Wan Kenobi that he did not trust Anakin and that pairing him with Chancellor Palpatine was a dangerous move. He also asked Obi-Wan if he believes that Anakin is truly the Chosen One. Now at this point, Palpatine gives another direct order to the Jedi Council. He wants Anakin to lead the attack on Utapu against General Grievous. Once again, the Chancellor had crossed the line. Although the Jedi Order served the Republic, they were supposed to maintain a high amount of autonomy and control over the actions of their own organization. When Anakin finally came to Mace Windu and let him know that Palpatine was in fact the Sith Lord the Jedi had been hunting, Mace Windu had already created plans to arrest the Chancellor and force him to relinquish his power. And although Anakin's warning re-established some trust between the two Jedi, Mace still didn't want Anakin to accompany him during the arrest because he once again was worried about where his loyalties lie. You see, from the very beginning, Mace Windu, who was a traditionalist and a firm believer in the Jedi Code and Council, would butt heads, obviously, with the protege of someone like Qui-Gon Jinn. And although Anakin Skywalker was torn between his allegiance to Palpatine and the Jedi Order, I think if Mace Windu adopted a softer approach to the young Jedi, he might have been able to establish a better relationship with him, which probably would not have led to Anakin chopping off is on. Well guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think about my little theory. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.